All right, so to add a little bit of color and texture to your scene, uh, the first thing that I prefer to do is change the material so that you can see a true representation of the color. So I'm gonna switch from this basic material into Skin Shade 4, uh, which you see is a little bit cleaner. Um, and I'm gonna also go to the worm and I'm gonna press S to get into solo mode. So that way I can just work on one thing at a time. Now, the second thing is to select a brush that allows you to paint. Uh, so a few of them come with ZBrush, like this paint brush. Um, I'm just going to create a simple one using the standard brush. So BST to select the standard brush. I'm going to go to brush and I'm going to clone it. And now that I have this brush selected, I'm going to turn this off, the Z add, so that I don't affect the volume. And I'm going to turn on the RGB so that way I can paint. Now, I'm going to select a, you know, a color that kind of like goes with the worm, um, the sand worm, something dull like so and i'm going to click on color fill object so now this is um this color is or this object is filled with this color and i can just go ahead and select maybe something a bit darker uh, and this is something that i particularly like to do with when i'm doing poly paint and it is a fantastic uh, a very simple trick and all i do is i select the the color that i use and then i just bring it down slightly so that it's a bit darker and then ZBrush comes with this awesome plugin, which is called the Ambient Occlusion plugin, right? And this comes with ZBrush. All I'm going to do is click on Compute. So this is going to create an accurate Ambient Occlusion, um, but it's going to create this as a mask. So basically, it's a mask that represents the Ambient Occlusion, and that way I can sort of invert that mask and apply the, the darker color. And that already gives me a, a pretty good starting point to add my polypane. All right, so that has been created. We can go ahead and open up the masking palette here and I'm going to click on inverse so that changes the the masking that was created by the amino occlusion plugin I'm going to hide the mask so view mask off and again I already selected a darker color so now I can go to color and fill object a couple of times with this darker color uh, let's go ahead and clear the mask now and you see we have like a nice variation of color um, especially around the, the details all right so let's go ahead and increase the darkness of the color and I'm just going to paint this, uh, by the way, also let me go to the stroke palette and I'm going to go to lazy mouse and I'm going to turn that off. Um, I prefer to work without lazy mouse when it comes to painting. So it's a little bit faster. All right, so I'm just going to paint all of this with a dark color. Again, you won't see much of that, uh, but just having a darker color helps to accentuate like how, how deep, let's say, the the mouth of this worm is. All right, pretty good. Another trick to add polypaint to an object is to take advantage of the uh, masking tools here. So I'm gonna click on mask by smoothness. That's going to evaluate the surface and look for areas that are smooth. Uh, I'm gonna increase the range a little bit, or actually let's go ahead and decrease that to seven so we can see more there we go. Uh, I'm going to hide the mask. So the mask is still there, but it's hidden. And I'm going to go ahead and click on polypaint, the polypaint palette here. I'm going to click on adjust color to bring in this extra tool or this extra window. And I'm going to hide the mask. Again, the mask is still there, but now I can just go ahead and change the, the intensity of the RGB. So this is purely to, to variate the, um, the colors a little bit. So that's kind of like cool. Let's go for OK clear the mask. So you see we have basically three um, hues or three different slight variations of the same hue. And then we can add a bit more complexity by changing the alpha to something like alpha 8 and the stroke to stroke spray maybe. See, that creates this nice variation. So let's go ahead and select a similar color and let's go more towards the red hue or orange hue. Um, and I'm just going to add a, a few touches of this color. Not too much. Again, just to variate things a bit. All right, and I think we can also add some darkness towards the, you know, these crevices that divide the, the worm. Also, keep in mind that for a concept, um, not everything is visible. So actually, if I get out of solo mode, I will be able to see exactly the areas that are visible. But, you know, in general, I think it works fine. All right, so that's not too bad. Um, I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm going to select the teeth now so from the subtool palette and i think i'm gonna i'm gonna go for a similar color yeah something like that so let's go to color fill object 
Um, and just to vary things a little bit, I'm going to go for a lighter color and just add some, yeah, some random bits of color in there, but not too much. I think that's pretty much it, right? Now for the dunes of the desert, so I'm going to select those. Uh, I'm going to go for a sandy looking color, very desaturated. Fill object. And from above, with a larger brush, I'm just going to add some variations in general. Like this is a very, very rough and very random. But all I want to do is create, again, that sort of variation in hue and color. There we go, something like that. And then take advantage of the masking tools again. I'm going to click on peaks and valleys this time. So this is going to look at the peaks and the valleys. So that way, um, maybe increase the range slightly. Um, that way I can sort of blur that mask, right? I can invert it and then I can add some highlights in here. So let's select this color and go for something a bit lighter. Go to color and fill object. There we go. So it creates that um, almost like a, I wouldn't say subsurface scattering because that's not really what sand has, but um, it just highlights some of the, yeah, some of the peaks a little bit more. And I think that works uh, quite well for the concept. All right, so again, a pretty simple trick, but it works nicely. Now for the character, again, it's gonna be pretty tiny and simple. So I'm just gonna go for a dark gray um, color fill object. And just to make it slightly more interesting, what I can do is uh, the same thing that I did for the worm. So C plugin, compute, that creates that ambient occlusion, invert that ambient occlusion, hide the mask, and go for an even darker color and fill that object. Right. Um, and again, just to make it a bit more interesting, uh, we can change this back to dots and the alpha to zero and a lighter color for the gray. I'm just going to add just some touches of gray, almost like painting the, the highlights. I know this does, this character <laughs> doesn't look fantastic, but um, at the end of the day, it's going to be so tiny and potentially out of focus because the, yeah, the focus of the concept is the, the worm that it doesn't really matter. All right, so I think that works. Um, the last bit is going to be taking those um, those spheres or those those rocks, and I'm going to convert them into geometry. So these rocks right here, it's kind of like hard to see in the, in the recording, but those rocks there, I'm going to go to the nano mesh palette. I'm going to click on one to mesh from the inventory subsection. That's it, and I'll do the same thing for the other one. This one right here, one to mesh. So now we can go ahead and isolate these spheres. I'm going to delete them. There we go. So we have a bunch of rocks. And again, I, all I've done is just like I hit those spheres. And instead of splitting it, which is what I did before for the teeth, uh, I just delete that geometry. And now I have two pieces that I'm going to combine together. So merge down. OK. So now we have the, the rocks in a single subtool. And I'm just going to use exactly the same color I use for the desert. And I'm going to fill those like so. All right. So we are at the end of the tutorial on how I created this concept. Um, obviously, the, the last part would be to, to render this out. You can totally do it in ZBrush. Um, and you can use the BPR techniques to essentially create a bunch of maps or, or a passes uh, to you know composite it in Photoshop. Um, I actually rendered this in Marmoset. And I'm going to show you how I did that in case you want to you know, do that. But um, this is not a, a rendering tutorial, but uh, I'll, I'll show you anyway in case you want to, you know, continue this, uh, this concept somewhere else. But just before I show you how I did that in Marmoset, I want to show you a really cool tip if you want to visualize kind of like fog or mist within ZBrush in the viewport. And that is also something that could help you enhance your renders if you want to do it just with BPR. So basically, I'm going to find like a nice sort of angle here uh, with perspective on. You can also play around with the camera from the draw palette and change the um, I think 85 should be okay. Maybe no, maybe let's go back to what we had. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take the rendering palette. I'm going to drop that to the right hand side. And in the render properties, you can go ahead and enable fog. Now the fog by default, you're just going to see like the background changes to this white color. However, you can go ahead and change this quite a bit. So if I open up the properties of the fog, so this one right here, you know, um, we can go ahead and play with intensity. But the, the point here, or the, the trick, is to change this color and play with the depth 1 and 2. So I'm going to select this first one. And this is going to be kind of like what is closer to the camera. So the first one is going to be, maybe let's click and drag to something like that. And the second one is going to be the background or like the, let's say the sky. So I'm going to select something like this, but then 
I can make it a bit lighter and a bit more saturated. Yeah, something like this, right? And then, like I said, we can go ahead and play with the depth one and two. So if I push depth, um, sorry, depth two to larger values and reduce the depth one, you see how I'm starting to to see the the effect of the of the fog. Just going to exaggerate it. All right, so now we see the fog, um, but obviously that's not necessarily what we want. We want to hide a little bit more of the back uh, and make this character and the front of the worm uh, a bit more visible. So that's where this uh, curve or this profile comes into play. So I'm going to click and add a point just to drag it like so, and then another one to drag it up like so. So I'm just going to increase the contrast in there. Let's go ahead and find a better placement for these points. All right, something like that, and then we go back and play with these sliders. Obviously, the, depending on the scene and the, the scale of your scene, um, it's going to look slightly different from mine. Uh, but I just want to give you like a sense of how how cool this this thing is. Um, and you can also click. Uh, this is another extra tip. You can click on top of the slider, and that opens up like a tiny slider. I don't know if you can see. It's kind of like a ghost slider that allows you to uh, change things in like slower uh, or smaller increments. There we go. So now I can rotate things around and that sort of fog is maintained depending on how close on how far I am from the or from the objects or the assets. Uh, so this might be something cool that you want to add. And again, it's just a matter of playing around with these um, settings in here. And in the render properties, you can toggle this on and off at any time. So this is the scene of the desert. Um, the, the fan art of the worm, the shy Hulud from uh, the movie Dune. All right, so the last tip that I'm going to give you, um, in case you want to render this out, I'm not going to worry or cover anything in terms of optimizing and creating maps and all of that. I'm literally just going to export this as 11 million polygons. In my concept, I think I had even uh, 20 million polygons because I had more details, I think. Um, but yeah, you can just go ahead and export everything as it is. Everything has been turned from like nano mesh into like editable meshes and the teeth and the, um, you know, the rocks and all of that so we're ready to go so all you have to do really is go to c plugin go to the fbx export import make sure that you select visible so anything that is visible in your scene will be exported and that is pretty much it you can just go ahead and click on export and it will export the entire scene so obviously i have already done that i'm not gonna subject you to wait until zbrush exports uh, 11 million but um it can be done and if you're using something like marmoset it can definitely uh, handle those millions of polygons so it's not a problem all right so let me just bring in marmoset now so here is my final scene for the actual concept that i created so this is literally the, the camera that used to render this out. Um, and this is the scene that I use. Now, when you bring in, like I, like I said, you can export millions of polygons and Marmoset, um, if you use Marmoset, it doesn't have to be that one, but if you use Marmoset, uh, it can handle millions of polygons with no problem. Um, the way that you bring in the vertex color or the polypane from ZBrush is by selecting the material. So I'm just going to select this worm and I'm gonna change the albedo from albedo which is what it should be by default in a new material and i'm going to change it to vertex color the rest is the same you can just go ahead and uh, change the specularity red roughness all of that um, but yeah this is pretty much it uh, i'm going to go ahead and switch to the main camera and i'm also going to change the gray to full quality so you can see the actual render there we go so this is the render and as you can see it's a pretty nice and simple way of rendering things out and it is using the poly paint from zbrush um, you know, it's it's pretty easy actually. There's no there's not um, a lot of magic or things that you have to do. Uh, for the most part, everything, all the complexity of this scene is done in ZBrush. Uh, all I'm doing right now is playing around with the with the fog, um, you know, the lighting conditions, the the camera angle, and all of that. Uh, but that's something for a different tutorial, um, and I'm pretty sure that you know you can figure that out by uh, by yourself. Now, one thing that I should mention that I didn't cover in the in the tutorial is that. Um, if I go to the actual camera that I use, I needed to have a bit more of these sort of sand dunes. So what I end up doing is I duplicated, uh, let me go back to the main camera. Uh, I duplicated the sand dunes elements, so the, the planes, and I just ended up with three planes in total and I just moved them around. And I did that within Marmoset just to, um, to help me you know, move things around so that the camera angle um, actually worked. But that's pretty much it. That's all I did. Um, the other thing that I didn't cover, but again, you can sort this out yourself, um, is that the, you know, just I created like these sort of uh, footprints trying to emulate that sort of the 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 walk that they do. Um, the Fresnel people, the Fresnel people, 
yeah <laughs> that they do in the dune um so i just try to emulate a little bit of that uh, you don't see that much in the in the actual camera um it's barely visible but this is the type of things that i enjoy um adding like those subtle details um but anyway so that is basically it uh, you can just go ahead and do a render um and then uh, a little bit of post-processing and color correction and all of that uh, maybe the fog in this case is a bit too much uh, so this is how it looks without the fog uh, and this is the fog here you can just click on this icon and it will create a new fog and you can um, assign different colors and, and all of that but again this is more about a rendering tutorial which is out of the scope of this whole series all right so that's pretty much it about this tutorial series if you have any questions about the tools the the features the tips and tricks that i share with you uh, throughout these videos uh, feel free to let me know and, and put them in the comments um, i'll do my best to answer them as soon as i can and other than that if you create your own concepts based on what i showed you in this tutorial series feel free to share it with me i'd love to see what you make up all right i'll see you in the next tutorial cheers